Welcome to this presentation of Unified Contact Centre Management Portal 8.5 System Architecture. This module is designed to provide you with an in-depth understanding of the Unified Contact Centre Management Portal. In it we will describe the key concepts and architecture of Unified CCMP and how it integrates into Unified CCE. The primary goal is to arm you with sufficient knowledge of the architecture in order to effectively support it. After completing this module, you will be able to describe how Unified CCMP works with Unified CCE and related systems, explain the technologies and concepts used by Unified CCMP, and understand the different deployment models available within Unified CCMP. This presentation will be split into four sections. Definition of terms, where we'll briefly run through the main terminology used when discussing Unified CCMP architecture. System architecture, where we'll dive into how Unified CCMP is put together. In the deployments models section, we'll cover the various deployment models available in Unified CCMP 8.5. And finally, we'll cover off a fairly deep look at the software architecture and how components interact with each other. So to start with, let's look at some of the terms used to describe Unified CCMP. Let's start with some of the main system terms used. Commissioning actions are performed by the host administrator, normally at system setup. An example of a commissioning action would be an initial data load during day 0 or day 1 activities. These are normally performed through Unified CCE or Unified CM tools. For example, IP phones in directory numbers can be commissioned by Unified CCMP or Unified CM. However, items such as calling search spaces and route partitions must be commissioned on Unified CM and then imported into Unified CCMP. This is compared to provisioning actions, which are the ongoing actions such as adding agents that are performed by the customer using the Unified CCMP user interface. A resource represents a configuration item and or a relationship between data items. Facts are the events that can occur on these data items. For example, an agent and their skill group membership are resources, whereas the details of a particular phone call taken by an agent is composed of fact data. Please note, resources are sometimes called dimensions. Duplex systems have two synchronized systems running simultaneously, usually on different sites. This allows for failover from one to another. A simplex system may have multiple servers, but these are all part of a single system. The Metastate model is a model of the contact center equipment, including the current state, previous state, and planned future states held by the Unified CCMP database. Unified CCMP regularly synchronizes this with the Unified CCE and Unified CM systems. This is done on a 15 minute interval by default. Microflows are used in the data import component to orchestrate a wide range of business processes such as importers. A microflow is a modular, reusable and independent unit of business logic. They differ from workflows in that a microflow is largely automated. Next we have security terms. In the security model, a folder contains other resources and is the basic building block of the model. A user in this context is not an agent provisioned by Unified CCMP, but is an individual who has access to the Unified CCMP user interface. They will be a member of a group, or sometimes more than one group, and their permissions are constrained by their roles. Within a role, the permissible actions are defined by the available tasks. A user may have several roles, which will depend on which folder the user is working on at that time. For example, a team leader may have permission to update their particular team, but only to view members of other teams. Users who need the same folder permissions may be assigned to a group that has those permissions. The roles that users may perform within folders are known as non-global roles. These are entirely different from global roles which switch on the ability to perform certain tasks and determine what tools a user can see in their home page. 
global roles are accessed from the settings page rather than the security management tool. For a user to perform a specific task, they must be allocated that task as part of both a non-global role and a global role. Unified CCMP is made up of several different components and these may be deployed in several different ways. The user interface is served and managed through the Unified CCMP web server that is hosted on a standard Microsoft IIS installation. The application server performs the logical operations required to translate the user's requests into database updates in the CCMP database and generates audit reports via the Microsoft Reporting Services accessing data in the CCMP and Administration and Data Server databases in response to user requests. The database holds the Metastate model of the Unified CCE and Unified CM systems including the history of moves and changes and details of pending provisioning operations. The Data Import Server is an extract, transform and load application that imports data from Unified CM and Unified CCE using OLEDB connections over TCP 1433. If changes are made to Unified CCE directly, then these are imported from the administration and data server and applied to the CCMP database so that the Metastate model is continually up to date. Any conflicts are resolved in favour of Unified CCMP since it is assumed that the end user's decision should take precedence. At the heart of the data import server is the microflow runtime. This process orchestrates the importing process via a series of microflow scripts. The provisioning service maintains connections between Unified CCMP and the main Unified CCE and Unified CM systems using Con API and AXL API interfaces to translate the Unified CCMP database updates to the appropriate command sequences for Unified CCE and Unified CM. These are then executed on the administration and data server and Unified CM as required. Regardless of the deployment model used, communications between the application server and the CCMP database is via an OLEDB connection over TCP 1433. Communication between the data import server and Unified CM uses AXL over TCP 8443, whereas between the data import server and Unified CCE, we use an OLEDB connection over TCP 1433. We still use AXL over TCP 8443 between the provisioning server and Unified CM, however we need to use CON API between the provisioning server and Unified CCE. Please note the connection to Unified CM should always be to the publisher, not a subscriber, and the CON API connection must be to the primary administration and data server. Unified CCMP utilizes facilities within both AXL and CON API to execute SQL directly against the database. AXL execute SQL is used for Unified CM, allowing us to update and retrieve data from Unified CM with minimal network load, while CON API manages query execution into Unified CCE and allows Unified CCMP to optimize requests by utilizing bulk APIs for operations like reskilling. Unified CCMP's data import component runs microflows that connect to the Unified CM via AXL and to the administration and data server via CON API. Changes are written into Unified CCE through the CON API interface, but the Unified CCE's information is imported by the data import server through a direct OLEDB database connection. In general, once the commissioning phase is complete and Unified CCMP is in service, the majority of this flow will be from Unified CCMP to Unified CCE. However, the Unified CCE administrator can still update resources via the standard user interface and these changes will be reconciled to Unified CCMP provided that the resources changed in Unified CCE are not open for edit by an Unified CCMP user at the same time. In this case, the data importer service will ignore any changes waiting to be imported from Unified CCE until the Unified CCMP record is updated. This effectively means that for any change conflict, Unified CCMP will be deemed the master in conflict resolution. As users will access Unified CCMP from the internet or intranet, 
appropriate firewalls should be installed either between the user and the web application server and possibly as well as between the web application and database servers. The exact position and configuration of these unified CCMP servers will have to be arranged with the customer's network administrators and will depend on their security requirements. A front-end firewall requires port TCP80 and TCP443 open to allow users to connect correctly to unified CCMP. A back-end one will require port TCP1433 open to allow the app server to connect to the database. If a firewall is placed between the administration and data server and the data import and provisioning services, then TCP ports 2099 and 2098 will be required to allow Con API connectivity. Port TCP8443 would also be required to enable provisioning of unified CM through a firewall. Unified CCMP will effectively manage throughput to unified CCE and unified CM to a maximum rate of one provisioning operation every five second interval by default. This interval is measured from the last completed transaction and is not set on a time based schedule. However, when agent self reskilling is enabled in unified CCMP, all provisioning tasks are executed in 30 second intervals. For example, let's say we issue a single task to add a person record and this takes 3 seconds to successfully complete. Unified CCMP will then wait a further 2 seconds before executing the next waiting provisioning operation. We then issue a batch transaction of 100 skill group membership changes and this takes 6 seconds to complete. The next waiting provisioning operation will commence immediately as 5 seconds or greater has elapsed since the previous provisioning operation. Please note, reskilling transactions and team memberships are bundled together in batches of up to 100 in CCMP853, but this can be configured up to 250 if desired. These batches are then executed as a single provisioning operation on either a 5 second or 30 second interval depending on the unified CCMP configuration. This time slot approach is designed to have zero impact on unified CCE and is achieved using the provisioning server's built-in request management system which will queue requests within the provisioning server until they can be executed. One thing to note here is that in the event that unified CCMP suffers a catastrophic failure, this will not obstruct you from performing configuration or operational changes in unified CCE. The normal unified CCE tools are always available and are not limited when you are using unified CCMP. The deployment model chosen will vary according to the perceived needs of the customer. For lab deployments, we support a co-located deployment on a unified administration and data server. This is only suitable in a lab environment for simple testing or as a demonstration platform. It is limited to a maximum of 200 named agents and should never be used in production. Standard deployments are split into two types, single server deployments and simplex deployments. A single site single server deployment should only be considered for small to medium sized deployments. This is typically the most widely used deployment model simply because of cost. This will provide for a maximum configuration of 1500 concurrent unified CCE agents. A single site simplex deployment provides greater capacity by separating the web server and application server components from the database, data import server and provisioning server components. It still however lacks any failover or resilient configuration. This model will support a maximum of 8000 concurrent unified CCE agents. Both of the above standard deployments are non-resilient in nature. However, most large customers demand resilience in their solutions. This can be provided through the use of a dual site single server deployment or a dual site duplex deployment, which will typically mirror what they already have in place for unified CCE. This should be the only model considered for large customers and or mission critical installations. Either of the two standard deployment models can be enhanced to a resilient configuration using a duplicate set of hardware with unified CCMP integrated data replication facilities to provide a geographically dispersed solution. Unified CCMP uses SQL Server replication to keep the two sides synchronized. The system capacity limits remain unchanged from their equivalent standard deployment models. 
Finally, we have the parent-child deployment model. This is typically a dual-sided duplex deployment at the parent site with discrete connections to each of the individual child administration and data servers. Each child will become a separate tenant within Unified CCMP. Firewalls should be used to separate the critical data from the user-facing web application servers and this will also prevent unauthorized access to the web and application server. However, this is not mandatory. A co-located deployment on an existing administration and data server may be useful for demonstrations or proof of concept installations, but should never be used as a production system. The first of the two standard deployments is the single site, single server deployment. In this simplex mode, all of the unified CCMP server components are installed on a single server. Most unified CCE customers use this deployment because it represents the lowest cost of deployment and ongoing cost of ownership. This model supports a maximum configuration of 1,500 concurrent unified CCE agents. The second of the two standard deployments is the single site simplex deployment. In this model, the front-end unified CCMP server components are installed on one server, the web server, and the back-end server components on another, the database server. This provides for higher capacity and performance throughout the system and increases the supported concurrent unified CCE agents to 8000 for this deployment model. This configuration also allows the use of a firewall between the users and the web server, as well as between the web and database servers, increasing overall security levels. With a dual site single server, the system takes advantage of SQL Server to provide additional resiliency, however the unified CCMP deployment itself is not fully redundant at this stage. Typically customers will deploy a load balancer to provide failover capabilities for the web servers. However you need to note that the connections are deemed sticky thus need to traverse the same web server unless there is a failure. We also recommend that the two sides are located in geographically separate locations with a dedicated minimum 1.5 megabits per second data link between them. This provides for service continuity in the event of a catastrophic failure on one side. Each database server can also have a backup link to a secondary administration and data server in case of primary administration and data server failure. However, both sides will connect to the primary administration and data server during normal operation. In the instance where you separate the server components of Unified CCMP with firewalls, please take note of the Unified CCMP section in the Unified CCE Port Usage Guide 8.5.1 to configure firewall rules to allow communication to pass unhindered between the Unified CCMP services. Again, this model will support a maximum configuration of 1,500 concurrent Unified CCE agents. With the dual site duplex deployment, the system increases the internal resiliency of unified CCMP by separating out the web server from the database server. This model is the most redundant deployment available. As with the single site simplex deployment, this model supports a maximum configuration of 8000 concurrent unified CCE agents. In parent-child deployments, a single dual-sided duplex unified CCMP instance connects to each of the child unified CC administration and data servers. These must be configured as physically separate primary administration and data servers. Each child instance appears as a tenant within unified CCMP. Resources added via unified CCMP are linked to a tenant and the added resource is replicated from the unified CC child to its parent using the standard replication process. We recommend that the web server is separated from the end users by a front-end firewall. This should be configured to allow TCP ports 80 and 443 only so as to allow the users to connect to the unified CCMP user interface without unnecessarily compromising security. Optionally, a back-end firewall may also be installed to effectively place the web server in a demilitarized zone and this must be configured to allow traffic on TCP port 1433 so that SQL Server connections can be made to the database. In addition to the ports required for Unified CCMP operation, we also need to open ports on the firewall for the connections to both Unified CCE and Unified CM. For Unified CM, we need to open TCP 8443 to allow AXL connectivity, and for Unified CCE, 
we need open TCP 2099 and 2098 for CON API connectivity. As mentioned in the previous slide, a complete list of ports in use can be found in the Unified CCE 8.5.1 Port Utilization Guide. In our experience though, no major customer will allow the implementation of a public facing solution without securing the critical provisioning data from unauthorized access. Please note that as Unified CCMP relies on session state, firewall connections must be sticky. Each web server must use a single language. At present, US English is required on the servers, however, the client side language support can include Italian, German, Spanish, Danish, Swedish, Simplified Chinese, Taiwanese, Portuguese, Japanese, Korean, Russian, French Canadian, Dutch, and French. The web server is a Unicode based platform with dynamic web generation from language resource files. The language to use in display is detected from the browser settings and the time zone is set in the user settings. If the browser settings refer to a language that is not present on the server, the language will default to English. However, a user can override the browser locale by configuring their culture settings within Unified CCMP. The user can also use a number of different tools to interact with the system, according to their permissions. The Information Notices tool allows a user to view or edit the information notices shown to users of Unified CCMP. The Reports tool allows a user to view or edit audit reports. The Security Manager tool allows system administrators to give security permissions to users. The Services Manager tool allows a user to edit resources such as agent teams and skill groups. And finally, the System Manager tool allows a user to create and manage resources and resource folders within a hierarchical folder structure. Unified CCMP is built using the Microsoft.NET framework. This framework provides pre-coded solutions for common requirements. It also guarantees common behavior regardless of programming language used. A set of class libraries provides standard functionality such as security management, network communications, and user interface design features. While Unified CCMP only needs .NET 2.0 functions, we require .NET 3.5 to be installed to maintain support from Microsoft. All of the 2.0 functions are available in 3.5. The application server is a core component of Unified CCMP. It interprets the user's input from the web user interface into the relevant provisioning commands for the Unified CCMP database and then executes them. In response to users' requests, it provides audit reporting detailing the moves and changes made to resources over time via the integration with Microsoft reporting services. The monitoring service provides proactive monitoring of database and application server states and allows automatic failover where configured. This normally requires a duplex installation, although without a full duplex installation, it is still possible to fail over between Unified Administration data servers. The SQL Server database, sometimes referred to as the Data Mart, stores event and resource data. Resource data relates to normalized objects such as agents, skill groups, etc., and their relationships to each other. Events occur on and with these objects. The Unified CCMP database also includes a reporting services database that imports and processes data from the data mart to allow the production of audit reports as the users require. As the audit reports have a historical capability, data is retained against deleted as well as active resources. To achieve this, we do not actually delete information from the database. Instead, it is flagged as deleted in the relevant resource or dimension table. The Metastate model maintains the relationships between CCMP and Unified CC database entities, allowing relationships to be maintained for use within Unified CCMP, even when no equivalent relationship or entity exists in Unified CCE. In a duplex deployment, the SQL databases need to be replicated between the two sides. Typically, replication is set up during the installation of side B. There are three types of Microsoft SQL replication available to use. The first one is snapshot replication, 
Here, the publisher simply takes a snapshot of the entire replicated database and shares it with the subscribers. It's mainly used with databases that rarely change. The next is merge replication. This allows the publisher and subscriber to independently make changes to the database. Both entities can work without an active network connection. However, when they are reconnected, the merge replication agent checks for changes on both sets of data and modifies each database accordingly. If changes conflict with each other, it uses a predefined conflict resolution algorithm to determine the appropriate data. Merge replication is commonly used by laptop users and others who cannot be constantly connected to the publisher. The unified CCMP reporting configuration database uses merge replication. The last is transactional replication. This offers a more flexible solution for databases that change on a regular basis. With transactional replication, the replication agent monitors the publisher for changes to the database and transmits those changes to the subscriber. This transmission can take place immediately or on a periodic basis. Transactional replication can be further split into two distinct categories, peer-to-peer -peer replication and bidirectional replication. Peer-to-peer -peer replication is a special type of transactional replication in which every participant is both a publisher and a subscriber and is most useful for up to 10 databases in a load balancing or high availability group. It's also only available using 2005 Enterprise Edition. Bidirectional replication is where two databases replicate the same articles to each other via a distributor. There must be loopback detection as data conflicts aren't handled and the replication must be implemented in code since the GUI doesn't support it. The unified CCMP portal database uses bidirectional transactional replication. You should note that all replication occurs over the OLE DB connections using TCP 1433 between the two sides. The data import server is an extract, transform and load server. It executes the script and rules-based extract, transform and load operations that implement all the transformations and bulk loads into the unified CCMP database. These scripts and rules represent business logic and are collected into microflows which are called by the microflow runtime and execute the various instructions contained within them. Microflows are fully modular and independent of the surrounding architecture. They are also fully automated so that they can be run without user or system interaction once initiated, unlike workflows. The data pipeline service is the main control process of the data import server. It controls which microflows are executed by the microflow runtime and is responsible for scheduling each microflow at the pre-configured interval. By default, it schedules the main data import microflow at 15 minute intervals starting from service startup. The data import server manages a set of checksums against each table and each row within that table to check for changes. Typically during normal operations, every time the data import server runs on its 15 minute import cycle, it will recreate these checksums and then compare them against the previous ones. It first checks the table checksums and only if those have changed, will it then check the table row checksums individually. If the table checksums haven't changed, it just moves on to the next table. Any changes are clearly identified and are scheduled for import. Once every 24 hours starting from when the data import service was last started, Unified CCMP undertakes a full reconciliation against Unified CCE and Unified CM to re-verify that the Metastate model held by Unified CCMP correctly reflects the Unified CCE configuration. It does this by recalculating the checksums for every row in every table and then walks through the Unified CCMP database checking every row against these new checksums. This is different to the 15 minute cycle in that it only checks the row checksums and doesn't look at table checksums. While this does have an impact in terms of an increase in CPU requirements, it is not significant enough to cause concern if it occurs during the middle of the day. However, for those concerned, they can control this by restarting the data import service at the time they'd like this task to complete. The Unified CCE and Unified CM servers are mapped into Unified CCMP by the Cluster Configuration Manager subsystem. This is used to configure servers, databases, Unified CCEs and Unified CMs post-installation.
The provisioning server is responsible for monitoring for changes made via unified CCMP user interfaces and then orchestrating those addition, deletions and changes into unified CCE. It's made up of a number of processes and sub-processes. The provisioning service is used to check for provision changes in the unified CCMP database and to signal to the provisioning runtime to perform tasks. It does this by checking the generation count table every five seconds and if this is updated it reads the new updated database records and passes them to the provisioning runtime. Application logic also prevents conflicting changes being made with the first change requested being applied. The provisioning runtime executes instructions based on direction from the provisioning service. At startup, it reads the connection configuration and creates a provisioning connector thread for each unified CCE and unified CM server configured. Within each thread, there is a plugin module for each data type that can be provisioned through that connector. For example, in unified CCE, there will be an agent plugin, a skill group plugin, and so on. When it receives work from the provisioning service, it assigns those transactions to the appropriate thread plugin and executes each transaction. It waits at least five seconds between transactions on a per thread basis. However, if agent self reskilling is enabled, this period will increase to 30 seconds. One thing to note, the provisioning runtime will batch up agent to skill group changes into batches of 100 by default. This is configurable up to 250 in Unified CCMP 8.5.3. This batch process is in operation regardless of whether agent self reskilling is enabled or not. In addition to this, the provisioning server has built in failover mechanisms, allowing automatic management of fault tolerance and providing a more resilient solution. The failover mechanism used differs based on the component failing or detecting the failure. It is usually by means of an automatic failover failback for certain processes, but a manual task for others. If a web server website is unavailable, traffic must be diverted to the web server on the opposite side, either automatically via a load balancer or manually via the user entering a different URL. If the active application server cannot connect to the Microsoft Reporting Services service or Unified CCMP database, it will automatically fail over to the opposite side and return to its preferred side when it becomes available. If the data import server cannot connect to its preferred administration and data services database, it will fail over automatically and return to its preferred side when it becomes available. Only one data import server can be active at any one time. Changing the active data import server is a manual process that involves moving a database token to the side which is to be activated. Similarly, if the provisioning server cannot connect to its preferred CON API server, it will, it will fail over automatically and return to its preferred side when it becomes available. Only one provisioning server is active at any one time. Changing the active provisioning server is again a manual process that involves moving a database token to the side which is to be activated. Please note the provisioning server can only connect and provision to a single CUCM AXL service. There is no secondary AXL service for failover. Each resource or dimension in unified CCMP can be in one of five states that indicate its stage in the resource lifecycle. When a resource is first provisioned through the web server, its state is set to pending active, sometimes referred to as synchronizing. This indicates that whilst it has been provisioned successfully within Unified CCMP, it has not yet been fully provisioned within Unified CCE. A resource can be deleted while it is in this state, but will not accept any updates from Unified CCE. This means that while a resource is in the pending active state, no updates are accepted from the data import service microflows except in the case where the resource is deleted. In this case, it can be moved to the awaiting deletion state. This business logic means that Unified CCMP is in effect the conflict master whenever there is a conflict between changes made in Unified CCMP and those imported from Unified CCE. The provisioning server will collect any waiting pending active and awaiting deletion items from the database and will submit the update to Unified CCE. 
Once a success notification is received from Unified CCE, its state will be set to ready. A resource will then normally remain in this state until it is deleted. If, once you have created a resource, you need to change its relationship to other resources, once those changes have been submitted for provisioning through the web server, the resources state will transition from ready to pending active until a success notification is received back from the Unified CCE. Once this is received, the resource will transition back from pending active to ready. Where the resource is unable to be provisioned, it will enter the error state. You can attempt to fix this either by editing the item in the Unified CCMP user interface, in which case its state will become pending active again, or you can delete it, in which case it will be set to awaiting deletion. This is sometimes referred to as delete pending. When you delete a resource through the web server, or when Unified CCMP automatically deletes a resource that has reached its active to date, it enters the awaiting deletion state which means that it has been successfully marked as deleted within Unified CCMP but has not yet been deleted from Unified CCE. Only when a success notification is received from Unified CCE will its state be set to delete confirmed. You should note that resources are never actually deleted from Unified CCMP. They are only set to the state deleted as their histories are kept for audit reporting purposes. SSL is the standard security technology for establishing an encrypted link across the internet. First, the server identity is established using a trusted certificate, then subsequent communications are encrypted. 128-bit SSL encryption is used between the client and the web server. Communications between servers may use IPsec at the customer's discretion. This is configured and maintained by the system administrators. Security management in Unified CCMP is folder-based. Users are granted permissions to perform certain tasks within certain specified folders and these permissions are inherited by the child folders and on down through the folder tree. Child folders inherit the permissions of their parent. Permissions applied to a folder will automatically also be applied to its child folders and the child folder permissions cannot be independently configured unless any inheritance link between a specific child folder and its parent is broken. If a child folder is specified to no longer inherit from its parent, all permissions that the user had on the child folder through inheritance will be retained. These may now, however, be edited or removed and new permissions can be added. However, updates to the parent's permissions will not now be propagated to the child folder. 